I'm joined now by one of the scientists from the Queensland Institute of Medical Research, Associate Professor David Harwich. David Harwich, welcome. There's been a bit of talk Thank this you. morning about cure. Can you just uh, put this in context for us, the, the word cure in relation to what you've found? Sure. There's, there's uh, two uses of that word today, and, and one, and probably the most important goal, is to uh, actually cure the body of HIV infection. So our particular uh, therapy is not a cure for HIV, but has the possibility of being a long, durable treatment for HIV infection that prevents AIDS, the disease. So explain the difference between HIV and AIDS for us. Well, HIV uh, is, is, the, is the cause of the disease. So HIV infects the uh, uh, human immune system, the T lymphocytes of the human immune system, and, and subsequently they die, and you're no longer protected uh, from other infections, say other viruses like the cold virus or herpes virus or other, other infections that can make you quite ill. Um, so that's, that's uh, what HIV does, and what our therapy is designed to do is to deliver a protein to the, or, or to treat a cell with a protein that protects HIV from growing in those cells. Essentially what our protein can do is keep HIV quiet inside those cells so it doesn't cause disease. Okay, and then uh, I just did go on to explain the difference between HIV and AIDS then? Right, so HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. AIDS is the disease process that takes a number of years and results from destruction of the human immune system by the virus. So HIV infection leads to the disease called AIDS. Mm. So, so what stage is the research at now? Well, we've gone through a number of preclinical trials, mainly in uh, human lymphocytes and culture. And, uh, and so we, we've designed some very rigorous tests. And what we were very surprised to find is that expression of this protein in human um, immune cells taken from the blood very strongly protects them from HIV, prevents the virus from growing in those cells. And so what would the treatment be if there is a treatment that is uh, developed? Well, a treatment will await um, a continued studies. So we're about to start uh, animal trials uh, in the very near future. And subsequently to that, um, whether, regardless of whether we try this on animals or eventually a clinical trial in humans, it would, be, it would involve uh, using a patient's stem cells. So the stem cells that are capable of generate, generating an entire immune system uh, would be treated with this uh, gene therapy agent and then uh, grown for a time in the laboratory and then reintroduced into the patient. Mm. And those, pa those cells could then generate an entire immune system that would wow. be HIV resistant. So how would that be administered? Okay, well, it's, it's not going to be unlike um, what, uh, say, for example, some of the therapies for, for uh, cancer where they use bone marrow transplantation as a therapy for cancer. Um, or, or, uh, or uh, adoptive cell therapy where they take a patient's own cells, treat the cells, and then put them back. So it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a system in which the cells are taken from the patient, modified, and then put back. So it's going to be the patient's own cells. And if um, someone with um, HIV was treated in this way, what then uh, would happen? Well, this is a good question. That's what these next trials are set to test. Uh, what we believe is that uh, so far what we've seen with this protein is that it doesn't appear to have any toxicity to the cells we want um, to, to protect. Uh, if that's the case, there's a chance that this would be a long, durable therapy for HIV infection. Right. So hey. perhaps, you could be, perhaps you could receive one therapy and then you wouldn't need to take any more antiretroviral drugs. So that's our goal. And what sort of life could someone lead then? Because they, they would still have HIV, but, but it wouldn't develop into AIDS? That's right. Mm. So right now there are patients uh, that have HIV where the HIV remains latent. It doesn't actually um, make very much virus, or if at all. And so basically we would be using a, an agent that treats the cells that mimics this process, that mimics virus latency by preventing HIV from being generated by these infected cells. So you could live a long time, potentially, with yeah. this therapy. And would your quality of life be uh, like someone who um, didn't have HIV at all? 
Well, you would be HIV infected, so that would always be the caveat that you would have HIV. So we couldn't guarantee that there would be no consequences of, of, of virus infection. We believe it will greatly improve uh, patients' quality of life simply because they won't be on antiretroviral drugs. And would, would you be less sick? Yeah, we believe so. We believe that this would uh, essentially allow you to live a normal life, you know, that you would be infected with the virus, but the virus wouldn't be causing any harm. And so you say there, there's a chance of this being successful. How, how strong do you rate that chance and um, how soon might some therapy be available if it is successful? Well, now you've, now you've asked the, uh, the, the big question, you know, <laughs> how, 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 what, is, what is our chance of success? Well, basically we deal in facts. So, so we set our, our clinical, tr our, our animal trials to be as rigorous as we can. In fact, we, t we set them up so that they have a, the greatest poten potential for failure. And so far we've done that every step with this protein and it's passed every test. So we're very optimistic that the animal trials will go extremely well and will progress to the next step which is probably going to be a, a, a test in primates. So, yeah, we think we, think we have a very good chance with this protein. And, and if it is successful, it would be some years off before it's that would it, would it actually be available to people? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it will be some time. But uh, we believe that we can enter into uh, the next phase of the, of the, of, of the experiments. Uh, we think if we can get funding for primate trials, uh, that that would take, several years so you know we're looking five to ten years being incredibly optimistic that everything goes according to plan yeah. that we might get a phase one clinical trial in that time okay associate professor david harris thanks very much for talking to us this morning and good luck with your work thanks thanks for having me